Hello, my name is Peyton McClouf. I am a music education major at the University of Houston, and I'm also a bassoonist. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to swab your bassoon. The first step of swabbing your bassoon is taking the bassoon apart. And you're gonna start with this right here, it's called the vocal. And you're gonna be wanna, you're gonna want to be very gentle when you take it out. So you wanna grab it by the crook part and just jimmy it out like this. You don't have to swab the vocal every time. So what most bassoonists do and what, well, all good bassoonists do is they cover up this little hole right here with their finger and put your mouth on the cork end and you blow like that and all of the good stuff will come out of the hole. On to the next part, this little lock mechanism right here. Right now it's locked. And to unlock it, you just simply lift it up like that. And when you take out this part right here, the bass joint, uh, you don't have to take the bell off since you're just taking it apart to swab. And how you would do this part is just grab it by the top and wiggle it out like that. And you have removed the bass joint and just set it down. And this part, the wing joint or the tenor joint, you're going to want to be very careful with this part as well. So right here, um, this little bridge right here, the metal is very malleable. So if you press hard on it, you can bend it and then you'll have problems with your whisker, whisper key, which is this part right here. And that's a very important part of the bassoon. So to take apart the tenor joint, just grab it really lightly. And as best you can, just wiggle it out. And you've taken that out. And the last part is the boot joint. And all you have to do with that is just make sure that you take the crutch out when you swab it. So that way you don't hurt your hand. The first part I'm going to be teaching you how to swab is the boot joint because it's the most dif difficult part to swab and I always start with this one anyway just to get it over with. So after a practice session there tends to be a lot of condensation that pulls up in this hole right here because that's where the tenor joint goes and of course the vocal is connected to that tenor joint so when you blow air and you tongue that's where all the condensation is going to end up. So with that being said you're gonna want to first, before you swab, take at least two fingers and cover this part of it just so that you don't get any water dripping here and on the sides because it can damage your keys a little bit. And you're not really gonna stop all the water from going to those keys, but this just prevents it from pulling there excessively. And you're gonna wanna get a trash can or the floor, depending on where you are. And you would just pour it out like this and that's when all the condensation would come out. And when you feel like you've gotten it all out, then you can swab. So to swab the boot joint, you're gonna wanna take your swab, make sure there's no knots in it because that can really mess up, not just the swab, but the most important part, your instrument. And you're just gonna wanna put the anchor into the big hole, which is where the bass joint goes. And you feed it through. And what you're going to want to do is very quickly turn it over and I got it successfully on the first try and it'll come out of the tenor joint side and of course you just pull and you would be swabbing where all the condensation was. And I usually do that about two times just to make sure I get it all out. The second and final part of the bassoon that you need to swab is the wing slash tenor joint. And just like when you took it apart, you're going to want to be very gentle with this when you swab it. Because again, this, you have the little bridges right here, and you can even see when I bend it just gently. It's very bouncy and it's very malleable, so you want to be careful. And I think this one's already slightly bent from the school, but... So, same with the boot joint. You take the anchor, and how I usually hold it is I put my thumb around this flick key right here, and I just wrap my fingers around it gently over the crook. And you're gonna wanna put the anchor into the side that goes into the bassoon. You can tell there's usually yarn or cork there. You feed the anchor through, and again, just like the boot joint, you can position your thumb down here when you do this part. Just make sure you don't 
I press on those bridge keys. You can put your thumb on the vent keys right here. Just very quickly pull it out like that. And I like to do it two times. And one thing that I definitely like to do is take the swab part and just, you can't see it because there's no condensation on it right now, but I would rub it and just wipe off all the condensation that pulls on the yarn because it's pretty gross and you wanna make sure that you get the bassoon as dry as possible after a practice session to prevent mold growth. Very important last message. Please swab after every practice session. You need to keep your bassoon as dry as possible as often as you can, especially if you keep it put together on a stand or in a corner. You don't want to have a damp bassoon in the corner, growing molds and just being gross because if your bassoon is gross and growing mold, it's not going to sound good. And you want to sound good. You don't want to sound bad. And yeah, get back to it. Have fun practicing.